Alright, to get started modeling this coral, like our previous tutorial videos, we're going to look at some reference images. So I pulled up this nice aquarium-like photo of different types of coral. You can see there's lots of different colors, lots of different types. I also pulled up a few individual photos of different types of coral. Here we have one that looks kind of tree-like with branching stems. We have one here that looks very alien. has these cool little ringlets here and this neat little turquoise green insides. And then this type looks a bit fanish, but kind of worms its way out. So we're going to go ahead and just look at these two. And then I'm going to challenge you guys to make this after showing you how I would do it. So let's start with this type. This type we're going to use with a special type of model called the scribble. So once we put this on the work plane, we are going to give Tinkercad a second to think about. And what this tool allows us to do is it allows us to draw the type of model we would like to see. So looking back at this, you can see it all kind of flows out in these little single lines. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to draw a nice little flowing line like that. I'm going to draw another one like this. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I have this kind of fan-like sea coral with all these different branching stems. And I'm going to add some, some come off like that. And there we go. I'm just going to add a few little connectors because you can see in here there's lots of ones that connect to the inside. Let's see, and maybe one more here and one here. All right, so then we're going to do is we're going to go ahead done in the bottom right, and here is our drawing. I'm going to lower it to about two since it's nice and thin. I'm going to change it to more of a pinkish color, rotate it. 90 degrees, bring it up so it sits on top of the work plane. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the scene. So I'm going to duplicate this. I can come up here and click the duplicate button. I'm going to move it and then I'm going to flip it with the mirror tool. So I'm going to mirror it this way. And this is a neat trick in 3D modeling. You can create really just one model and you can kind of get two out of it. Sometimes three if you duplicate and then change the size of it like that. Now, of course, this model likes to freak out because it's so thin it's having trouble recognizing the commands. I'm also going to rotate it slightly. And then I'm going to make this one slightly smaller as well. That, bring this out a little, and there we go. We have some nice little coral backgrounds. I'll put that off to the side. Now let's go ahead and do this one. So this one's probably my favorite to do. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the torus. Increase the size a little bit to edit something proportionally like I just did not do. I just grab this and you can kind of change it, it looks real funky. If you hold shift while you click on this, you can change it so it stays the same proportions. Then I'm going to grab another torus. I'm going to change the color of this one so it's a bit easier to differentiate between the two. Rotate it 90 degrees. Then I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to align it like this. I'm going to click on that. And I'm not going to click on that. And then I'm going to drag this one up slightly so that it sits along the inside of that ring. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this, Control D on the keyboard, or duplicate button up here. I'm gonna rotate it 22.5 degrees, and just move it over slightly. That looks about good. And then watch this, when I hit the duplicate button again, it repeats that last action that I just did. I'm gonna keep doing that. So if I keep pressing Control D on the keyboard, or the duplicate button up here, it'll keep repeating that action. What I've done now is I've created a ring of toruses. What I'm going to do is you notice that it kind of went outside this ring. That's fine. We're just going to resize this torus here. We're going to do that by proportionally dragging it, moving it back into place, and maybe doing it just a little bit more. What we can do is we can align it so all of these work. Now I know all these purple toruses are perfectly aligned with each other. They did the operation I said. But this turquoise torus here, maybe not so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything, but I don't want to select this turquoise torus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift, click on the turquoise torus, and now you see it deselects that one, 
the only shapes selected are the rings here. I'm going to combine them like this. And then I'm going to click on the turquoise torus and the purple rings. And I'm going to align them so that they're centered on each other like this. There we go. That's looking better. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these again. And remember when you combine things that are different colors, it changes to the dominant color or the color last selected, which in this case it was the turquoise. I'm going to hit multicolor there. And what that does is it changes it so they retain their colors. Now we're going to add this little greenish bit here, the green turquoise, with, let's say, a half sphere. Let's put that in the center there. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Change it to a nice color like that. And then, of course, align it so everything's nice and centered. Group it again, control G on the keyboard, or push the group button up here. All right, and now we're going to add a base. So let's drag this up. Grab a paraboloid. Let's make it a big paraboloid like that. Let's change the color to this greenish color. Maybe a little too high. Let's drop it down just a little bit. There we go. Looks good. We're going to align it. And group it. Then once we do that, we can duplicate it. Resize it. Maybe rotate it a little bit. Duplicate this, rotate this one a little bit, and resize this one as well. Now we have some nice alien looking coral to go with our normal little wormy coral. Now this last one here, I'm going to challenge you guys to make it yourself, but I'll show you how I'd get started. I'd grab a paraboloid like this, maybe make the paraboloid a little taller. And then what I do is I duplicate this paraboloid, rotate it slightly, and then maybe change it so it's a little smaller. And now I have one trunk. So I have one of these, right? And then maybe I duplicate it again. And you notice when I duplicate it, it does the same operation I did to this one, to this one. So this one I duplicated and rotated and made this. And then when I hit it again, it just makes this one. And then I can do it a few more times and I get something like that. So you can keep doing that and keep duplicating rotating, changing the size, and moving up and duplicating like that. And you can get some weird funny shapes. That's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching.